A Midwest Sprint Car deal goes sideways between owner and driver. Sprint Cars After Dark gets spicy in California and plenty more from the Dirt Racing Weekend. Let's go. It's Sunday, April 7th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily presented by Kubota Genuine Parts. We'll kick this show off with the news that just popped up here a little bit ago. The Kubota High Limit Sprint Cars will not be at Riverside on Tuesday this week as originally scheduled. The race has been pushed to Tuesday, April 23rd because of thunderstorms and possible flooding in the area this week. The series will now restart its season on April 12th at Texarkana 67 Speedway. Uh, that's this coming Friday. After that, it's the Texas Motor Speedway Dirt Track, RPM, Red Dirt, Southern Oklahoma, Salina High Banks, then back to the ditch on April 23rd. I think after that, you'll see a number of the High Limit teams go to Knoxville that following weekend to race with the World of Outlaws. Uh, before we get into some of the racing, there are a few other news items to cover off on from the last few days. First, we had a bit of a strange situation pop up late Thursday into Friday in the sprint car world. Australian driver Lachlan McHugh just finished up his season down under and was set to travel to the U.S. to begin another summer driving Brandon Eikenberry's 25 car. A year ago, McHugh had 39 wing starts in the U.S., picking up a win at Shelby County, and he had six total top fives and 10 top tens competing around the Midwest and with a lot of the major traveling series. But McHugh shared to social media that he would not be making the trip and that he needed a break from racing. He apologized to his sponsors and supporters and wished the Deuce 5 Motorsports team success. Eikenberry, though, was not pleased with the late decision from the driver, and he shared to Facebook, quote, What this kid did was very selfish, immature, and unprofessional. With zero time to decide an alternative route, we are left scrambling to figure things out, unquote. Eikenberry went on to say, This is a lesson for younger kids out there that talent can only get you so far and that commitment and sacrifice were necessary to be the best. I'd say we could probably assume here we won't see McHugh back in the Eikenberry 25 at any point in the future. I have a hard time finding fault here on either side. If McHugh isn't fully committed, it's not a good idea to travel halfway around the world and be miserable all summer. But I also don't blame Ike and Barry for being upset about finding out very late uh, suddenly that he didn't have a race car driver. The 25, though, did make two outlaw appearances over the weekend with a late call to carry Madsen to fill the seat. Madsen very much becoming the super sub these days. The team had some issues on Friday. It was 36 and were done early in the night, but bounced back to finish 13th on Saturday at Arrowhead Speedway. Two other sprint car notes for you. First, Caleb, uh, California driver Caleb Henry will head east to pilot the running Boxer Farm 101 car this season. The team will race this coming week at Attica Raceway Park, and I'm sure probably a heavy slate of Ohio action is coming up. Along with that, the team has hired crew chief Kevin Osmolsky, who was uh, with Parker Price Miller for a while previously. And High Limits Chase Rodman mentioned in a Friday YouTube video on his channel that Chase Briscoe will be making his season debut in his 410 Sprint car this coming weekend with High Limit at Texarkana 67 and at the TMS Dirt Track. Texas is next for the NASCAR Cup Series teams after Martinsville today, so he'll already be in the area. Remember, he's running, uh, he's going to split the uh, time in his own sprint car this season uh, with Carter Sarf. One Dirt Lane Model news bit as well, Earl Pearson Jr. has decided to chase the MLRA Championship in 2024 after following uh, falling off the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. The MLRA opener was rained out this weekend at Tri-City. They will uh, now start the year at Lucas Oil Speedway uh, in Wheatland, Missouri, April 11th and 12th. With the Word of Outlaws this weekend, David Gravel extended his championship lead with now 11 races complete. A win Friday at uh, US 36 and a second last night at Arrowhead pushed his points lead to now 40 over Donnie Schatz. Gravel now has four straight finishes of second or better. It may have been a weekend sweep for Sheldon Hoddenshield, who won the Jason Johnson Classic last night and who was leading past halfway on Friday before he tangled with the lapper of Chris Windham and ended up 12th. Gio Selzy bounced back from a tough night at 81 Speedway the uh, week before to grab two weekend top 10s, even though he needed a provisional Friday after blowing a tire in the night's LCS. He did charge from 25th to 9th and led laps last night before finishing in third. The Outlaws are back next weekend at Peavely for two race programs. At Texas Motor Speedway, uh, Brent Marks picked up the Friday night Power Eye Sprint Car win. The Saturday show was canceled because of high winds. Marks had an early battle with Brenham Crouch, who ended up spinning out of the fight, uh, but the 19M was unchallenged late in the going. Marks, Blake Hahn, Noah Gass were the night's podium finishers. The TMS Dirt Track doesn't get used very often, and I was told Power Eye worked on it for a few weeks to start getting it into shape. Remember that High Limit is now going there this coming Saturday uh, and again in October. 
There were some issues on Friday, though. I, uh, I was sent a few photos of tires that were not ideal after heat races. But apparently, uh, High Limits competition director Mike Hess was in attendance. And hopefully with a week now to get it worked in, the track crew can get things sorted. We talked last week about Marks and Crouch heading to TMS to get that early look at the track before the High Limit show as they are series full-timers. Power Eye had also advertised Chris Windham going there, but they actually ended up racing with the Outlaws all weekend. That extra track time could pay dividends for those two cars, uh, especially for Marks, who is at the moment uh, and likely will be uh, going forward in the mix for the championship battle all season. I remember those guys, too, uh, as well, are battling in the top five for one of those high limit charters. In weekend late model action, Mike Marler bagged $30,000 last night in the season opener for the XR Super Series. He got the lead when early frontrunner Dale McDowell slowed on lap 14 with a mechanical issue. Devin Moran made a late charge, but had to settle for second. There was a wild moment on that lap 14 restart that ended up collecting Brandon Overton, Jimmy Owens, and Ricky Thornton Jr. had some damage as well. Guys were three wide down the backstretch, and it, the, kind of the hole there closed up quickly. You don't often see drivers of that caliber get caught up together uh, in incidents like that. XR is back today running the 12,000 to win show that was originally scheduled for Friday. Ashton Winger and Kyle Bronson were spring at Nationals winners at Buckshot and East Alabama. Bronson actually nicked Zach Mitchell on the final lap for that EAMS win. Tyler Stevens and Morgan Bagley were comp cams winners, and Dennis Herb Jr. bagged $5,000 at Brownstown with James Essex's Northern All-Stars. Darren Fuqua and Jake Tim grabbed USMTS wins at Humboldt Speedway. I believe that was Thursday and Friday, but Saturday's finale was postponed. Carter Sarf and Kale Drake were Extreme Outlaw Midget winners at US 36 and Sweet Springs. Kevin Thomas Jr. was a USAC CRA winner at Mojave Valley. Eric Riggins won the USCS show at Cherokee, and Danny Dietrich won it yesterday at Port Royal. There was a big pileup, big crash there in that Port Royal race uh, right at the start. Took out a bunch of guys as well. Finally today, Sprint Cars After Dark got a little spicy last night. Both the NARC 410 uh, series and the Sprint Car Challenge Tour were in action at the Stockton Dirt Track for the Asparagus Cup. Stockton looking very different after being reprofiled and now sort of resembling a sort of smaller dirt version of Martinsville. Much flatter, very paperclip shaped. It sounds like the jury is still out on uh, this new setup. Justin Sanders won the SCCT portion of the night and Cole Macedo took NARC win number two. We had fireworks though uh, between Tim Kading, DJ Neto, and what I'm guessing was a track safety official. Before halfway, Neto and TK were battling for second. Neto actually muscled his way by the zero machine, driving up over the berm in turn four to do that. Contact between the two then led Kading to get turned into the front stretch wall, and he was none too pleased about it. He was quickly out of the car, and he ran all the way down to turn one to confront Neto. It appeared initially it was just a bit of a heated conversation, but it looked like maybe there was a late punch thrown in there as well. The safety official then pulled TK out, and there was a brief altercation between those two as well. Uh, the feature was eventually stopped with two laps remaining, and Macedo declared the winner. I feel like Sprint Cars After Dark rarely fails to disappoint. Narc is back this weekend at Hanford. Uh, that's it for The Daily Show today. You do have some streaming options on this Sunday, so make sure to visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight to see what there is to watch today. Hope you guys have a great Sunday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.